answer the question because it was given to me. Is it true that you're angry? And I was supposed to say, oh, no, I'm not angry. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with the way everything's running. We owe $19 trillion. These Republicans, our friends, you know, look, at least we know where the Democrats are coming from. But the Republicans four weeks ago approved a budget that gives Obama every single thing he ever dreamed of. Money for the migration to come in, right? Money for illegal immigrants to come in. Money for everything, everything he wanted. I always say, Obama's a terrible negotiator. He never wins, makes the worst deals I've ever seen. The deal with Iran is the worst maybe I've ever seen. Forget about nations. It may be the worst deal I've ever seen. So incompetent, it's true. But he's a great negotiator where? With the Republicans, okay? If I get in, Believe me, it's going to be a whole different story, folks. It's going to be a whole different story. You talk about people being angry and how the middle class is being treated. It brings up a good, actually a letter to the editor I read this morning in the Charleston Post and Courier from Kirkpatrick Sale. And he was trying to understand the Trump phenomenon that's taking place in this country. Well, and let me tell you, he came to the conclusion... In his letter, he said that it's not new. It goes back to the founding fathers, the Jeffersonians, people who were suspicious of the elites, didn't want a big centralized government. They wanted to return it to the states. And he said that you're the Jeffersonian. Are you the, is this guy right? Are you the Jeffersonian candidate for president? Well, uh, first of all, that's a nice compliment. But honestly, I'm a messenger. I'm, we're all together. Okay, we're all together. One of the, one of, we're all, like, we're all the same. One of the things, and I really mean, I can't stress too hard, you know, I was a big contributor. I gave to everybody. I would, and I understand the power of that. You get tremendous power. And when you look at uh, the electric companies and the lumber companies and all these, and then you wonder why are we making such bad deals? A lot of times it's not that the politicians are stupid, because you say, how could they make such bad deals? They're making them because they're controlled by the special interests, the donors, and the lobbyists. I mean, I know. I've had lobbyists. I know a lot of the lobbyists. Uh, I have lobbyists. I know lobbyists that can do anything. They go into a certain person's office, and that person will vote badly for the country, good for the company or country. You know, when I say country, other country. You know, other countries have lobbyists. I mean, they hire to just drain us. China is taking so much money and jobs and everything out of our country. It's hard to even fathom. If I cut that way, way back, Carl Icahn just endorsed me and other, the big, great businessmen, they would do this. They don't want money. They want, it's, for them, it's sport. They, you know, they love the country in their own way. They love this country and they want to do great. They're great, great people. They're great people at what they do. They're great at business. They're great at negotiation. We have political hacks. We have people that know nothing about negotiation. They got their job because they made contributions to some politician, and they have these people negotiate against China who are absolutely, I mean, these people are trained from the time they're five years old how to, you know, do things. And they end up taking the absolute best of the best. And we have people that don't know anything negotiating with them. China, $505 billion trade deficit in one year. Think of it. How, do you, how can a country even survive? Japan, smaller numbers, but it's a tremendous number. They send the cars in. We take the cars. We give them practically nothing in return. So what kind of a deal is this? We're going to straighten it out, folks. You know, when I first, Van, when I first announced, and it was so exciting, but it takes guts to run for president. You know, it's, I've never been a politician before, but I see how incompetent they are, or dishonest, or influenced. I mean, I don't even know if I call the, the influence really dishonest, but in a form, of, it's a form of dishonesty, to be honest with you. But when I first decided to do this, I said to my wife, look, they're making all these horrible transactions. They were in the midst of this Iran deal, which, by the way, wouldn't you have thought just once or twice they should have gotten up and walked? Did they ever walk? They could have walked and they would have ended up making a much better deal. I tell the story all the time. I don't know if I should tell it now, but I tell the story on the Iran deal that we got our hostages back. Those hostages should have been back years ago. They shouldn't have come back a couple of weeks ago. And what you do is you walk in and you say, got to have our hostages back. They'll say, no, you leave. You leave. And you ratchet up the sanctions. And after you ratchet it up, they'll call you back within like uh, two seconds. And they'll say, you've got your hostages. You've got your hostages. You get the hostages back. Then the other part about the deal, we gave them $150 billion. $150 billion. And by the way, the way we made the deal, it looks like a ransom that they got $150 billion. They let four people go. Okay. 
And, you know, the whole thing is so horrible. So now you go in for the seconds and you say, listen, we got a problem. The problem is we owe $19 trillion. We can't give you the $150 billion. I'm sorry. And you know what? They're going to get angry as hell. They're going to leave and all that stuff. They'll be back in a week or two. We save $150 billion. We give, we don't know what we're doing. We have people that never once got up and walked away from the negotiation, and they should have walked away five different times. We have people that went into that negotiation, and it was reported all over the media that they were dancing in the streets of Iran, burning the American flag, and saying how stupid we were to make this deal. And Kerry never even walked. If somebody did that to me, if I'm making a deal and people are saying, boy, what a stupid deal. This guy's really stupid. What a, this is what they were saying about us. I'm leaving anyway because I don't want to feel like, I mean, you feel, right? And then you have the people over there, you know, the people that President Obama calls the supreme leader. I will never use that term. Believe me, I will never use it. But Obama, Obama talks about the supreme leader. Well, the supreme leader was over there. And what's he saying? We're stupid. He said, well, you are, we might not make the deal. We think this deal is good, but we may not make it. We hate the American. And I'm saying, why are we dealing like this? What you do is you ratchet the hell out of the sanctions and you make the right kind of a deal and you get the prisoners back for nothing. They could have had those prisoners back in one session if I did it or if I had one of my killers from Wall Street. You got to pick the best people. You got to pick the right people. But we had... This guy, John Kerry, is a total stiff. Okay, he's a stiff. We have... I mean, these are people, honestly, in the private sector, you'd never hire a person like this. You'd never hire a person. In all fairness, Jeb Bush, you would never hire him in the private sector, okay? Too low energy. You wouldn't do it. Okay. But some of you, about 2% are gonna vote for him, so I'm sorry I told you. You talk about getting the right people. And you know, Mr. Trump, that's something Ronald Reagan said. He said personnel is policy. You get the right people, they'll, they'll do the right job. You kind of gave us some insight during, at the debate on Saturday night of the types of people you would appoint to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Tell us about the rest of the Trump administration. How would it look in terms of personnel? Okay, well, first of all, it was very interesting because the debate the other night, I was being hit from every angle, even by the moderator. You know, where they'd say to Bush, uh, well, you know, Mr. Trump said this or that about your brother in 2006. You know, they're trying to start trouble, right? So I was being hit and hit and hit, and I was really happy with the way it came out. I mean, I, was, I had to be very tough because, you know, you, you got to do it. You, I'm being hit by Rubio at the end because he said, oh, well, I agree with them. I said, where did this guy come from? Here's a guy, I watched him. <laughs> it's true. I mean, he's all of a sudden agreeing with Jeb. And I said, I said, Van, I said, where did this guy come from? Two weeks before at the other debate, I watched him melt. He was melting, he was sweating. I thought he just got out of a swimming pool. No, it's true. What the hell was this? So, so at the end, so I, you know, so every, every different angle. And I had, uh, you know, the other guy just tells lie, 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 lie. And I say, why do we, you know, the good thing is I can defend myself because I have a big audience. So when somebody says like, I am, there's nobody stronger in the Second Amendment running than me. Nobody. Nobody stronger, period. No, it's true. But I have this guy, Ted Cruz, who's a liar. Now, actually, Rubio called him a liar, so it's much better. When a senator calls another senator, and then when a senator from Oklahoma, who's one of the most respected people, say he's a, you know, horrible. I mean, you got to read this story. It just came out a little while ago. So I feel I can do it. But Rubio did it. When I say Second Amendment, my whole thing is Second Amendment, it's get rid of Obamacare. He'll say, uh, Donald Trump does not want to keep the Second Amendment. Now, how do you defend yourself against that? Every speech I say, we have to protect the Second Amendment. I've been doing this for years. And he goes, Donald Trump, he's talking to some guy on a television show. And I'm watching. Donald Trump does not like the Second Amendment, doesn't want to keep it. How do you defend yourself from that? So at least I can talk about it. He said, Donald Trump loves Obamacare. Donald Trump, from the day it came out, has been against it, and I'm repealing it. I'm gonna, it's gonna be repealed. So fast, folks, so fast. But here, here's the thing. And I really got the lesson in Iowa because what he did to Ben Carson, honestly, was a disgrace. What, what Ted Cruz, what he did, what Ted Cruz did to Obama, where he said that Obama had quit the race 
and take our votes. Right? Is that right? Carson. I'm Carson. 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 He said, he said that Obama, Obama should have quit the race. It would have been... <laughs> wouldn't that have been nice? But he said that Carson had quit the race. That Ben Carson, who's a terrific guy, that Ben Carson had quit the race and he's out and he's gone and take the votes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay? And I want to tell you something. That is just dishonest. That is really dishonest. That was a terrible thing. Then he voted, did a voter violation statement, and it looked like it came right out of the IRS. And it said, you're in violation, ba ba ba. Essentially, go vote for Cruz and you won't be in violation anymore. But what he did, honestly, what he did to Ben Carson was one of the more despicable things I've ever seen. I tell you what, these politicians are bad news, folks. They do things that are pretty bad. We were talking about Iran just a little while ago. Other, the other side of the world, Kim Jong-un, we've seen the ballistic, more ballistic missile test, nuclear test. And Mr. Trump, it's been revealed that going back for many, many years, they've been, they have been financed. The North Korean regime has been financed by the Iranians. How do you deal number with Number one North, part? How do you deal I mean, with North Korea? It should Korea? have been part of the deal that Kerry made, right? The number one partner of North Korea, the Iranians. I mean, it's the number one thing. And the other one is China. Now look, I told you, China has drained the United States. It's one of the great thefts in the history of our country, what China's done to us. They've taken our money, they've taken everything, right? They've taken everything. We have lost millions of jobs because of China. China, here's the good news, China needs us so badly. China has, we have so much power, they don't understand it, we have so much power over China. And China has real good control over North Korea. Now they say they don't because they like to taunt us. Oh, well, we don't really have that much control. They have almost total control and you have to remember this, they have almost total control over North Korea. We don't use that power. The power of trade is our power because they take so much money. Without, without that trade, China would be in a depression the likes of which the world has never seen, all right? So we have tremendous power over China. You know, everyone thinks it's the other way around. It's not. The other thing is Iran. Iran is their number one partner. It's their number one relationship. And here we are, made that deal where we give them all of that money, $150 billion. They make that deal. And what happens? I mean, take a look at it. We get nothing. Why wasn't that part of the transaction? Because we have this maniac. Now, with all of that being said and done, you have South Korea makes a fortune. I bought 4,000 televisions. I buy televisions from South Korea. I buy air conditioning units. I don't buy carry anymore because they're moving to Mexico. I guess you heard that, right? <laughs> I'm not, I won't buy them anymore. I'm not going to buy Carrier. Carrier is moving to Mexico. They're closing down. They're moving to Mexico. Forget it. And, and by the way, I hate to say it. Uh, they're moving to Mexico. They're getting rid of all those jobs. I saw those men crying. Those people were crying. They had their jobs. They didn't even know about it. Let me tell you something. I would tell Carrier, guess what? You're going to make air conditions in Mexico. Good luck. When you sell them to the United States, we're charging you a 35% tax. Every air conditioner comes across the border. 35%. And you know what? You know what they're going to do? They're going to say, uh, if he really means that, we're not moving to Mexico. Okay, we're going to stay in the United States. It's crazy. But we have a tremendous, go back to South Korea, they make a fortune. We protect them. We have 28,000 soldiers on the line between North and South Korea. Think of it. 28,000 soldiers. And we, we, we're taking care, we are protecting them. They wouldn't be there if it wasn't for us. They pay us peanuts. Why are we doing this? We protect Japan. We protect Germany. A lot of people don't even know that. Do you know that if Japan gets attacked, we have to protect them? If we get attacked, Japan does not have to do anything. It's always like, wait, I, most, most people, do you know that we protect Japan? We get peanuts, like peanuts. When you look at our military budget, it's, it's much higher than anybody else's by a factor of many times, like 10 times. Part of the reason is we're protecting everybody. And we protect Saudi Arabia. Now, until the oil went down, so now they're making less, but they're still making a lot. Saudi Arabia was making a billion dollars a day. We protect Saudi Arabia. So why isn't Saudi Arabia paying? We have military bases that we pay rent on to Saudi Arabia, okay? We've got stupid people running our country. I mean, we have people that don't know what they're doing. Saudi Arabia is making a billion dollars a day. I know Saudi Arabia. I have many friends. They buy my apartments. How can I dislike them? Right? China, too. They buy my apartments. They pay me numbers. I'm very happy with them, okay? <laughs> but, but think of it. Saudi Arabia, a billion dollars a day, and without us, they wouldn't be there. They would have been gone a long time ago. They would have been gone a long time ago without our protection. We get peanuts. 
It's going to change, folks. It's going to change. We have no choice. We can't, owe, we can't have $19 trillion 